Hey students, thank you for visiting me again. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about the curve cycloid. I'll give you detailed method of constructing this video. So to get maximum from this video, be ready with drawing instruments and sketchbook and follow the construction I'm explaining you. So let's begin. Cycloid. Path traced by a point on the circumference of a circle rolling without slipping on a fixed line. Now here is a fixed line and imagine a circle rolls on this fixed line. How many points are there on the circumference of the circle? Of course infinite. Focus on the point, this blue colored point on the circumference of this wheel which is initially in contact with the fixed line. And this circle starts rolling. Now check how this blue point is moving. This path traced by this point that is a cycloid or locus of this blue point that is cycloid. So of course each and every point on the circumference of the circle move along its path and path of each of these points is a cycloid. So initial position of the circle or initial position of the center and after one complete revolution final position of the center the distance covered is pi d that is nothing but circumference of the circle if you imagine the circle to roll further then only that cycloid repeats so this is how one more identical cycloid that gets created and if circle continues to move, so same curve repeats again and again. Now here, one more example. Now let's press path of the highest point. So let's focus on this red point. And circle starts moving, so check how that red point moves. This is the path or you can say locus or you can say curve traced by that red colored point. For one complete revolution. So from initial position, initially it is the highest point on the circle. After one complete revolution, it will be highest point on the circle. Or here check blue point, which is lowest point on the circle. After one complete revolution, it will be again lowest point on the circle. Now read this problem. A circle of diameter 40 millimeter rolls without slipping on a fixed horizontal line. Trace path of a point on the circumference of the circle take initial position of the point in contact with the fixed line now watch here initial position is the position which is in contact with the fixed line and this is the fixed line this fixed line is also called as guiding line during the motion now you know that path traced by any single point and now our focus is on the point in contact with the ground initially is cycloid. Now to draw the cycloid, we are going to mark certain positions of the point during the motion. And precisely we are going to mark 8 positions of the point. This is initial position and this is first position, second position, third position, fourth position fifth position sixth seventh and eighth position so final position is again in contact with the ground because one complete revolution has completed here but distance covered is a pi d so during the motion center moves along a straight line straight horizontal line so this is initial position and as this circle starts rolling here you get the first position I have used a black color to make you visualize that first position. Now here it is second position of the center. Of course during the motion it changes its position continuously but we are going to mark certain positions of the center. This is second position, here it is third position, here it is fourth position, fifth position and so on. And this is final position that is eighth position of the center so try to understand the procedure for set roller with horizontal edge of your drawing paper 
and draw a horizontal center line now use a protractor in this way in this way in the sense its axis of symmetry along the center line and straight edge of the protractor will give you exact vertical line now circle of diameter 40 mm that is radius 20 mm so take radius 20 mm in compass and complete the circle so this is that rolling circle remember dimensions are to be inserted after completing the drawing now divide this circle in eight parts so use a protractor measure angle 45 degrees with reference to horizontal lines on both the sides and watch here this is how we have completed eight parts of the circle so draw a horizontal line <clears throat> use roller carefully set a roller with this center line and then roll that roller downwards to draw this horizontal line this is that fixed line on which the circle rolls now visualize direction of rotation so it's clockwise this is initial position of center and now center is going to move along this horizontal line rightwards and this circle is going to rotate in clockwise direction now in the direction of rotation you are going to label these eight points on the circumference of the circle what is initial position in contact with the ground and that is zeroth position so i have labeled that point on the circumference of the circle which is in contact with the ground or that fixed line as zero and then in clockwise order because that is the direction of rotation label the points on the circumference of the circle eighth position that is final position which is again the lowest point so initial position is lowest point and after one complete revolution final position is also lowest point now how much distance the circle will cover in one rotation this is that distance and that is equal to pi d so calculate pi d diameter is 40 mm so pi into 40 that distance you measure along this horizontal line and it is 126 mm make that distance pi d thick so that there will be no confusion at all so this distance pi d to be divided in eight parts how to divide it try to understand the procedure at certain convenient angle it can be any angle at certain angle draw a line from one end of that distance pi d so from left end of distance pi d i have drawn a line it's an inclined construction line so it should be thin line this angle is any convenient angle so i prefer 25 30 degrees you need not even measure that angle just draw a line at certain angle with the horizontal whatever may be that angle don't use angle too large or too small now take certain distance in compass whatever any convenient distance so set with reference to this dimension diameter of roller 12 13 14 mm that's enough you must be able to accommodate eight divisions on this inclined line accordingly you take that convenient distance so it this distance you need not take uh, measure it properly take any approximately say 12 to 15 mm distance and mark eight divisions on this inclined line So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is eighth division. Now join end of the last division with end of the distance pi d. Now set roller with this inclined line and roll it. And this is how from each division you have marked. You should draw parallel lines. so continue with this procedure
and this is how you have divided this length pi d in eight parts now this is initial position of the circle check here what we are going to do now initial position of the circle and in initial position here the circle is in contact with the fixed line after one complete revolution the circle is in contact with the fixed line here after half a revolution the circle is in contact with the fixed line here after one fourth revolution it must be here so these are points which we are marking here all these points are points of contact of the circle in its eight intermediate positions so this is a initial point of contact with the fixed line and the circle moves along this path and intermediate points of contact i have labeled here so this is that point 1 this is initial position of the circle and here the circles first position we are going to mark second third fourth so these points we have marked here now set roller with this horizontal line roll it and extend the center line this center line is nothing but path of the center so check here center is moving horizontally and this is the path this horizontal line is a path of the center line that is what we have drawn now set roller with vertical center line of the circle and from all these points which you have marked on distance pi d from all those points draw vertical lines check here and this is how you proceed what is this we have done to so we have marked centers intermediate positions of the centers so this is initial position of center and when circle reaches this position position 1 the center reaches this position that is c1 and this is how you labeled all the centers so these are centers here we have marked initial position of center first position second position of center third position of center fourth position and so on now let's proceed there are eight points marked on the circumference of the circle from all those points you are going to draw horizontal line so from point 1 i have drawn horizontal line now from point 2 horizontal line is already there that is center line then from point 3 horizontal line then from point 4 horizontal line then from point 5 horizontal line but because these points right now are placed symmetrically on the circumference of the circle the horizontal line through point 3 and horizontal line through point 5 is one and the same line so as a procedure remember from all these points which you have marked on the circle you should draw lines a parallel to guiding line here guiding line is horizontal so these lines are drawn parallel to the guiding line means horizontal now we are going to mark these eight points on the curve initial position there are infinite points on the circumference of the circle we are going to trace path of the point which is initially in contact with the fixed line that is the lowest point on the circle so i have labeled it as a p0 so this is initial position of that point p let it be point p and p0 that is zeroth position of point p now take a radius in compass what is diameter of the circle 40 mm so radius of the circle is 20 mm take a radius in compass and from center c1 you cut first horizontal line check here from center c1 you cut the first horizontal line so use a compass take distance equal to radius of the circle and from center c1 cut the first horizontal line now here itself try to understand where generally students make mistake 
I ask you to cut first horizontal line from center C1. Now, what if you cut it on this side? Here, if you cut it, then that is mistake. So try to understand this. First point on this circle. Is it on the left side of center? Yes. So P1 must be on the left side of center C1. Now follow this procedure. That is, keep the same distance in compass. That is equal to 20 millimeter radius of the rolling circle. And from C2, cut the second line. Second line, that is line through point 2. This is that horizontal line through point 2. Have you noticed second point is on the left hand side of center of the circle. So from C2, you should cut on the left hand side. So from C3, you cut the third horizontal line. Check again. Point 3 is on the left side of center. So that is why from C3, we have cut the third line on the left side, not on the right side. Okay, fourth point is the highest point. So from C4, you cut the highest line. And actually, it should touch the highest line. But because of constructional error or because of instrumental errors, this arc may not touch the horizontal line at the top. But you must know that since the fourth point is the highest point, from C4, you will get the highest point. So to mark P4, you can just extend this vertical line through C4 and mark P P4. Now from C5, cut fifth line. But now watch here. Point 5 is on the right side of center. Point 5 initially is on the right side of initial center. So here from C5, we have cut on the right side. So from C6, cut sixth point. From C7, cut 7th point, 7th line. And from C8, cut the 8th horizontal, 8th horizontal line means this fixed line itself. And because you have taken radius in compass, it should touch the horizontal line here at the ground. So this is how you have found out 8 positions of this point P, which is initially in contact with the fixed line and moves along its path. So join all these points to form a smooth curve. When you are sure that your drawing is complete, you should insert the dimensions. So diameter of the circle is 40 millimeters. Distance covered in one complete revolution is pi d and we have measured 126 millimeters. Write this note here, you need not insert that unit millimeter everywhere in the drawing. Instead. You write one statement which is applicable for entire drawing. All dimensions are in millimeter. Now listen, in drawing, line work is very important. So check here, circle is thick, this distance pi d, that is guiding line, and the curve, that is what is involved. Check here, read the problem. Circle of diameter 40 millimeter in, is in existence here. So that circle is dark. It, there is a fixed horizontal line, so there is fixed horizontal line that is dark and you are asked to trace path of a point and that point is initially in contact with the circle. So this path you are asked to trace, so this path you should draw dark. Draw the normal and the tangent to the curve at a point on the curve 30 millimeters above the guiding line. Guiding line means the fixed line on which this circle rolls. Okay, so 30 millimeters above the guiding line. So from this guiding line, measure vertically distance 30 millimeters. Distance from a line means of course it is perpendicular distance. So guiding line is horizontal line. So it's vertical distance, 30 millimeters. This horizontal line at distance 30 millimeter, it intersects this curve at these two points. So there are two points on the curve which are 30 millimeters above the guiding line. Draw normal and tangent to the curve at a point. So there are two points. You draw normal and tangent at any one of these two points. So we'll prefer this point to draw normal and tangent because this point is very close to the construction. Lot of construction work is here. 
will prefer this point so let's draw normal and tangent at this point so this is the point which is 30 millimeters above the guiding line try to understand the procedure here diameter of the rolling circle is 40 millimeters so radius of the circle is 20 millimeters take distance 20 millimeters in compass and from this point let it be point Q from this point Q you cut the center line so we have labeled this point as CQ logic is simple listen when point P is in contact with the ground initially here was the center the initial position of center when point P is at this position P3 center of the circle is at this position C3 when point P is at highest position center of the rolling circle is here C4 when point P is at this position Q then center of the rolling circle is here point Q is in between P5 and P6 so center of the rolling circle must be in between C5 and C6 that is why take radius in compass and from point Q you cut the center line between C5 and C6 now from CQ draw vertical line check here from C3 there is a vertical line from C2 there is a vertical line what is logic behind this vertical line when center C2 is here circle is in contact with ground here at point 2 similarly when center is at CQ the circle is in contact with ground here so from CQ draw vertical line label that point as N why we have labeled this point as N because this point N is going to give you normal to the curve so join N and Q and extend so this is normal to the curve at point Q so to draw tangent at point Q simply use a protractor in this way take help of axis of symmetry of protractor set axis of symmetry of protractor along the normal so that you will able to draw a line through point Q and this is tangent so this is how we have drawn normal and tangent thank you for watching my video hope you have liked the video and if yes share the video with your friends subscribe my channel and if you have any doubt let me know below in the comments so bye bye